I realized I haven't done a garden tour in a while so I thought I would quickly take you through my garden. I say quickly but it won't be quick because there's so much to see. Um, so let's get to it. Let's see what's growing in my garden. I love this tank patch. There's so much in here at the moment. So many blooms and it's really beautiful. The broccoli has gone to flower but I'm leaving it for the bees because we opened the hive the other day and there was no honey in the supers so while I have so much abundance here in the garden, so many flowers for them to visit, I've noticed that with the cooler, wetter weather they haven't been as active as they usually are. They're all fine, they're all healthy um, but um, I'm leaving as many flowers as I can in the garden and I've noticed that with the warmer weather and the sunshine that they have been out and they've been very active and they're starting to forage now. So just leaving as much as I can so that they can make us some honey. They've got honey in their brood boxes down below but um, just no extra honey that we can take. So the last of the lilies are doing their thing and I've still got an abundance of poppies. I think that's yarrow over there. The marigolds are starting to pop out which look really nice with the um, those orange poppies. I've got the salvias in amongst there too. I think this is golden marguerite. Heaps of um, chive flowers still. The lettuce is all bolted but that's okay. I'm going to let them um, do their thing so I can keep the seeds. The salvias are there. I've got the purple, the pink and the white. The sorrel's getting really big which is nice. It's really beautiful. Such a nice addition to the garden and I think I think these are scabiosas. Can't wait for them to open. So beautiful. Let's go in here. The anise hyssop has opened up. Look at those flowers. Aren't they gorgeous? And this is another marigold, but it's slightly different. So it's still unfurling, but I'm looking forward to seeing that in all its glory. In here, the cornflowers. Cornflowers are back there, the purple things. I don't know if you can see them. There's so much in here. There they are. And the straw flowers here. I wish I planted these closer so I could admire them more. But there they are, looking good. This um, hollyhock has been attacked by the um, those things. Can't remember what they're called. There's another one there. Harlequin bugs. Oh, so many harlequin bugs this year. In here, the corn is starting to tassel. So that's really exciting. And we've got the male pollen flowers out. So that's awesome as well. The um, watermelons are starting to bloom. I hope we have some soon. And I've got a few beans growing up too. Not as many as I'd like, but they're in there. Here we go. There's one climbing. And then on this side, it's looking a little bit empty, um, but it is what it is. These are the cucumber melons, they're starting to take over. And hopefully the eggplants will start producing. Um, this has been stripped back by the ducks, I believe, but it needs to go anyway. Um, that was a sprouting, a Chinese broccoli, but now it's looking like it's a... <laughs> It's a Brussels sprout, so maybe there's a Brussels sprout baby in there that's taken off. No, that's coming from the, the Chinese broccoli stem. I don't know, that's weird. I can probably pull them out because they're starting to get affected by whatever that is. Do you know what that disease is? I get it on a few of my broccoli plants. It kind of swells the, the stem a bit and the leaves are deformed and they've got this white bit on it. But anyway, that can probably come out. So I can sew something else in here. Have you ever seen this happen before? I'm getting baby leeks growing out of the flower and basically they're direct clones of the leek. I won't be saving them because the leek wasn't anything special. You can see it at the base here. Nothing special. If it was huge, I would have kept it. Um, but basically instead of forming seeds, it's formed the little babies that I could propagate. Now this space is my favourite spot on the farm. Let's go have a look what's growing in here. This sunflower's all droopy, just waiting for the seeds to mature so I can cut it out. But the zucchinis are growing like crazy. 
They should probably come in and harvest some. They're the Lebanese zucchinis. And then I have the golden zucchinis. And then I have those ones, which I think are blackjack or black beauty. Some more goldens. Some more goldens. Some more Lebanese. This is another black beauty bush. There's one there at the back that needs to come out. Actually two that could be harvested. Run Denise zucchinis. Cocazelle zucchinis. And some more black beauties. And my babies there are still growing and they're starting just about to start flowering. I've also got a couple of cabbages. These are the ones that are already harvested and they're growing all this. That's all bitter and gross. They probably won't do anything, but they're there anyway. A couple more cabbages, this one there and that one. The um, potato onions are starting to flower, so might save the seed from those. Dahlia's coming up. Get more broccoli going to flower and then let's go over here the fever fuse come out which is super pretty against the dahlias especially the queen cafe ole isn't she stunning yes 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 she is ah so many dahlias so much color shall we go have a look in there or should we go have a look at the dahlias. I buy dahlias. Look at these, so pretty. This one's a big, they have the curly middle. Love it. The only thing is, is they face downwards. So, I've got to lift them up so you can see the centers. But the bees love these and they do add lovely color. A pom pom variety, such a gorgeous color too. The asparagus. Um, jungle got some more of those purpley ones I think this is a cactus variety looking forward to that opening up and then I noticed in here the other day bushfire I'm pretty sure this is called bushfire look at her isn't she pretty this is the amaranth love lies bleeding I'd love to pick some for a vase because I think that would look gorgeous hanging out such long tassels, beautiful. Love the colour. I should have planted them elsewhere so I could admire them more next year. And I've had a few questions about this. It's hiding a bit at the moment, but this is called Bells of Ireland. Look how beautiful it is. Love the colour. Green flowers, so obscure, but that's fun. It's a little bit hidden but pretty cool. Okay, now we can go in that bed. <laughs> this sunflower here is called Double Dazzler and she's a beauty. Love, love, love her. So gorgeous. And a few more sunflowers happening. The Cape gooseberries have exploded in this food forest area and so have the nasturtiums. <laughs> They're taking over, which is fine because they're supposed to be taking over the grass because there's a lot of that happening in there. Got some more broccoli. I harvested a heap yesterday, but with the heat, um, it's just producing like crazy. And so is this one. This is a purple sprouting broccoli. It hasn't stopped. It really has been um, unfaultable. Lots and lots of stems on it. It's pretty cool. I dropped a heap of foliage here. A few things had gone to seed. I didn't think they developed seed, but obviously they did. I think that's mustard greens that are self-sown there. Pigeon peas, they're a bit of a border along here. I do have some loofers. I'm not sure how well they'll do in Victoria, especially in La Nina, but they're there. It's another cabbage that needs to be harvested. Nice and big. And a 
another double dazzler gorgeous some more dahlias that's a pom-pom one nice orangey color there's a heap more dahlias through here we'll go explore those these are brussels sprouts i'm not sure if we're going to get brussels sprouts off them i think they're just bolting there's a few aphids in there now too which is unfortunate but it's just that time of year maybe on this one they're looking a bit tighter hey And all well, the leeks are going to flower. I'm going to pop in through here. Gorgeous leek flowers. So there's a whole row of those. A few of the onions have gone to flower. I don't think I'll be keeping the seeds from those. The onions are still growing and bulbing up. It's huge, hey? pretty happy with the onions this year there's capsicums in here cape gooseberries and tomatillos um, I'll probably pull most of the tomatillos out because I've got plenty there's only so many tomatillos I can eat um, got this cute little pink pom-pom dahlia another one of these ones got a red and a white and those are Prado red sunflowers they are gorgeous loving the flowers try and find the pathway so I can keep going so heaps and heaps of onions they're coming out very soon as soon as they flop over so I can store them the first of the oh that didn't really that's a bit gross that was supposed to be my first <laughs> capsicum but I think it died in the heat it's a bit mushy a few holes in it Hopefully that's not a sign of things to come. Anyway, you can go there on the floor. There's a few more that'll look a bit sad, so I'm going to pick them off. I think that one's looking sad too. I wonder if that was a lack of water or just the sun and the heat. Let's have a look at the, Let's have a look at the soil. Yeah, it's a little bit dry, but maybe it was just a lack of water. Oh well. Okay, in here I have celeriac, which I've been using the leaves of, the celery, heaps of kale, and there's a couple of sprouting broccolis either side, as well as the cabbages, which is starting to head up, which is nice. These red ones are better for summer, down here anyway. Uh, and I've got some um, sugar brain kick in now. Got some early Jersey Wakefield cabbages there. Um, they're all ready at once, which is always fun. I think I need to give sauerkraut another go. And then leeks up the side and carrots and eggplant and um, capsicums dotted in between. But let's have a look, a closer look at these Prado Reds. Hello, you beautiful flower. There's another big one up here. It's just a regular sunflower. Ooh. I'm short, I'm a metre and a half tall. I'm standing, <laughs> I'm standing on the ledge, which is giving me another 30 centimetres. So we'll call that 180. And I'm still struggling to see her. Hello, beautiful sunflower. You bring so much joy to the garden. So that's about two metres tall. And we'll be able to see her better from down there. Shall we go down there, guys? Let's go. We've had a few issues with the tractor overheating and the baler mucking up. So we're running really late, it's 8.30. We're supposed to get rain at 8, so it's holding off. But you can see the dark sky coming. So uh, hopefully we can get all of it baled. We've got 100 up already. Um, 
which is good that's enough for our animals so the rest is just bonus it's for bedding it's for compost um, and it's for regenerating the land so we pop it on in bare spots the seeds fall it reshoots but the animals eat it and you know whatever they don't eat kind of rots down and, and um, you know adds organic matter to the soil like we do in the veggie patches up the top so um, regeneration isn't just in the veggie patches it's the whole 54 acre farm it is a slow process and uh, yeah it's not doesn't happen overnight obviously last year we got 350 bales um, down here but we uh, fertilized with wormweed compost tea um, microbes that I brewed and um, like a fish emulsion that we got from Vitec which is a natural um, mineral kind of company they um, they sell Pat Colby minerals so if you're into regeneration and natural um, farming you'll probably have heard of Pat Colby um, but they make their own um, seaweed solution it's not just seaweed it's got carp in it um, I believe it's carp um, or I think they actually use the offcuts from the fish market as well um, and they mix up all their vitamins in it so we use that on the paddock so it'll be interesting to see if we get more bales this year I'm wrecked this morning uh, it's a bit of a struggle to get out of bed let's be honest my body's aching <laughs> and uh, from walking up and down that hill um, and lifting bales onto the trailer so when we thought it was going to rain Paul kept bailing and I loaded a trailer with about 40 bales plus the other two trailers that I helped him with and they're heavy and I'm getting old <laughs> so I didn't finish my garden tour yesterday my phone went flat after I did the upper level and then um, I needed to go help Paul unload the trailer of hay um, in between that. And then things just got crazy. I went and had to get fuel for the tractor. <laughs> and then I ended up getting fish and chips for dinner because I just didn't have time to cook at that stage. And um, we're trying to beat the rain. So um, I popped down there <laughs> and um, gave him a hand. Um, the baler was mucking up, so I had to... Um, pick up all the strings that didn't work out and um, move the, the loose hay from that row into a different row so he could pick it up and um, we worked till 10 30 at night and the kids were there they were fantastic Israel drove the car um, Israel helped me um, move the bales um, that had mucked up and pick up all the strings and <laughs> giant Zara just were running around having fun um, and then sat in the car um, after it got really dark, um, around 9.30 it got dark, um, but at that stage I was loading the trailer by myself while Paul was still bailing um, because we could see the band of rain move over us um, and we just wanted to get as much bailed as possible before it rained and it in didn't end up raining, it, it dropped a couple of drops of rain, um, not even enough to cover the windscreen, just a couple of splatters on there, so we decided to just keep pushing on. And we still didn't get it done. It's just the way it was. Tractor overheating and all that sort of fun stuff. Um, so today, um, it's a little bit dewy, so we're gonna let it dry. Uh, today we're going to go pick up the um, waste from the supermarket. And um, we compost those and we feed them to our animals. Um, and then uh, we'll go down and finish off the paddock just so we can get it all under cover. It's going to be cooler this week and may rain on and off. It is La Nina, so who knows? And now um, I'm actually picking a veggie box. Can you see it over my shoulder? <laughs> I always take a good supply of elastic bands. It just makes packing the box so much easier if I can bundle them up in the basket. I'm going to start off with some kale. I've got this red Russian kale here and this Tuscan kale here. So I'll pick a nice little bunch and add it to that. The pink and gray galahs are being cheeky. And now I've got a nice big bunch of kale that's taking up my entire basket. I'm going to go harvest an early Jersey Wakefield cabbage. These are mini cabbages, so I ended up picking two because I've got a heap ready and I can't use them all 
Um, they do only grow to about one kilo. So these are a little bit smaller than that, um, but they are ready to harvest. So there they are, ready to go into the box. <laughs> now for some of this amazingly productive sprouting broccoli. I do have some elsewhere, but I'll pick all this and I'll add it in and um, then I'll go hunting for the rest. So there's a nice bunch of sprouting broccoli for them. Got purple and green in there. I'm going to harvest some of these garlic chives. They are starting to flower. I've seen a few flower buds poke up um, elsewhere. So I'm going to give it a trim before it gets too crazy with flowers. Because I leave the flowers. Um, I leave all my onion flowers because bees love onion flowers. So um, might as well. But they're busy in the zucchinis right now even though it's um, overcast they're at work and they're but i'm going to get harvesting some of these so there's a nice bunch of chives they're great in asian dishes in dumplings and stir fries really really um, handy to have as you can see i just cut it like the other ones and um, they will start to regrow very soon it's zucchini time now, so I'm going to go harvest some of those. So that's a harvest of eight plants. <laughs> those eight plants, the established ones. But I just planted another 15 as a succession crop. The rhubarb is growing crazy with this heat and wet combination and they love rhubarb so I'll pick them a nice big bunch of this and goes on and on and on and on and on <laughs> so there's a nice a big bunch of rhubarb very very happy rhubarb at the moment let's go down the bottom and see what's down there okay so silver baits growing like crazy in the heat I picked a huge bunch yesterday for our lunch but I still have plenty more, so I'm going to pick a bunch of rainbow silver beet now. So there is a lovely big bunch of rainbow chard or silver beet, whatever you want to call it. Yum. And lastly, I'm going to pick some cucumbers. I already have some in the house from yesterday. I'm going to see what's ready today and pop that in the box. Yum. So I give a bit of my veggies away. Obviously we eat full time out of the garden veggie wise. I buy a little bit of fruit every now and then. The rest we forage. I'll show you later <laughs> uh, what I mean by foraging. But um, I butter most of it um, just for things that we cannot grow. And then I sell my excess like this veggie box and that pays for staples that I can't grow, like flour and grains and sugar and spices and oils and chocolate and coffee, stuff like that. So um, the garden makes us fully self-sufficient, not, not just from growing our own food, but from using that food to get other food. So that was a very measly cucumber harvest. And I say measly because I've got about 50 plants here. These white pickling cucumbers haven't produced yet as with the um, Indian burr cucumbers haven't produced yet. So the most prolific have been the poinsette. I think that's how you say it. And all the way over here, whee! Um, the German pickling, no, or the national, national pickling, sorry. That one is so there's none ready there today but um hopefully soon there's heaps of flowers and then we can make some pickles so there it is a nice big box of veggies not too much variety this week i'm not sure what happened but um <laughs> there's a lot of veg there and so this is 20 dollars um for quite a bit in there quite heavy So the rain's held off, thankfully. It somehow missed us. It was raining in Melbourne, so that's twice it's missed us in 24 hours, which is good. 
um, but we've got to unload this trailer um, and then we can go get another load. So that would be about half to a third, a third to a half of what we've got down there that's already up here. Hopefully we can get it all done. It's lunchtime, so we've got a few hours ahead of us. It's getting full in here. <laughs> now we need to get the next load. Does anyone else work barefoot foot in the paddocks? I'd only do it in short paddocks because snakes live in there. Deadly snakes live in there. But so much more comfortable for me. This is our flattest paddock and Mr. Squizzy is driving in between the rows of bales and we both load them on. Hey Rexy! <laughs> this is where Rexy chose to sit. Not in the front seat, but in Jai's seat, his favourite spot in the car. Doesn't really love the car, but he loves being with us. It's okay when it's just slow like this. But if we go on car trips, he gets really seasick, car sick, motion sick. Hi guys, this is the third attempt to film this bottom area for you guys to give you a garden tour. Yesterday we finished the hay before it rained. It actually didn't rain yesterday, but it is about to rain now. I think yep. it might even be starting. So I thought I'd grab, jump down here quickly and show you what's growing down here. First, let's turn you around. Back there, that's my pumpkin patch. That's about 300 square meters, 350 square meters, something like that. And it's full of pumpkins, so they're slowly growing. No flowers. Actually, there are a couple of flowers, but no pumpkin fruit yet. The artichoke, artichokes are still growing strong. Um, um, down the paddock, there's hay bales mm -hmm. and some broken, and there was used to be hay, hay bales. Yeah. And we get them in the upper shed. That's where hay Bales go. Mm -hmm. She's all dirty. This is just a stain on her top. She's not grotty. <laughs> um, we did have an issue with the baler last night. It broke. We've got 10 bales down there that we can't get up. That's fine. We'll probably just um, manually put that in the trailer when it dries out after this rain and use it um, to mulch the orchard. So that's fine. Um, but the artichokes are still going strong. They're still flowering and this area is growing like crazy. This is the in-between bed from the two veggie patches that's full of flowers for pollinators. You squeeze it like this. <laughs> Down at the base. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoops, that one fell off. Don't, it's all right, Mum. Mum. Yeah. Mm. Not working for me today. Yeah. Why is that <laughs> not working? Don't know. This one. Mum, what are they? They're called snapdragons, and the bees love them. Mum. Yeah, you're making it talk. <laughs> Is that like a rat? Mm hmm Okay. I'm going to go down the bottom now before it rains. This area is growing like crazy and I put it down to the compost that we put on it. Um, so these patches, that one and that one and that one where the stakes are, last year just had stunted plants in it. They weren't growing. And um, the only thing I really changed up is hot compost on the beds with mulch. I mulched last year as well. Um, but things are growing like crazy, including the weeds here. Still need to mulch that. It's getting there. We're getting there. Lots of things on the list <laughs> to do. But let's go have a look at everything that's growing. Behind me there is the potato patch, which are getting close to being harvested. Looking forward to that. And I'll turn you around and I'll talk you through the garden. 
So this area is quite biodiverse. Uh, we've got our fever few, which we use medicinally. Um, it's actually an insect repellent, so the bees don't like that, but I can use it to repel other insects from my plants and I can use it um, to make bug balm and all that sort of stuff. The leeks are gorgeous and in flower. The fennel is another um, insect repellent and that's a batch of flower. The bees do like those flowers though, so that's good. Um, this is fish, fish mint <laughs> and um, it's a ground cover, it's going to suppress the weeds. And this is lemon balm. We have Fino Verdo basil, which needs to be harvested, and all the silver beet and tomatoes and alpine strawberries. A random cauliflower that survived the summer. It's a purple one. So hopefully with the cool weather this week, that will grow and I can harvest it. Um, on this side, we're starting to get tomatoes. Um, these are bush tomatoes, so they don't need to be staked. And there are the Thai pink egg variety. So lots of flowers and fruit happening. They shouldn't be too far away. And of course, my alpine strawberries, which we raided this morning. The yacon and drew some artichokes are filling out. It is. Um, the tomatillos, they're starting to get lots of fruit on them. You can see they grow in these little calyxes, these little... Um, what do you call them? Oh, papery husks. <laughs> I just, I got distracted by this. This is a nigella flower. I think it's um, Love in the Mist. So I was thinking about them yesterday. I thought I killed them, but no, I didn't. It's there hiding. <laughs> um, some more snapdragons there for the bees. And these are dianthus hiding there with lots of chilies and there sorry these are capsicums lots of capsicum flowers and a couple of fruit so that's a banana sweet banana and they've been the first to produce this is another one it's got a little bit of purple on it which is fine that's not sunburn that's just a purple coloring so I must have cross-pollinated um, in the seed pack that I bought and eggplants and then chilies on that side so this area is really, really full. Miss Sarah is foraging for alpine strawberries. One of her favorite things to do in the garden down here. They're very, very prolific. Great strawberry to have in the garden. The bees don't, sorry, the birds don't find them because they are white. Most of them are white. I've got a few red varieties. Um, but the white ones are just so prolific. And they're yummy. And they're yummy, she says. <laughs> These are the red ones. Not as yummy. We prefer the white ones. So on this side, the chilies are flowering like crazy too. I have a few flowers planted in. So waiting for those to grow up. Um, waiting for these to flower still so I can figure out what they are. They have shaded everything else that I grew in here. But hopefully we can still get the rue and the other thing that I planted to <laughs> to produce but I didn't expect this to grow so big and it just took off it took off so quickly um, I found my first cosmos flower very excited about that super super pretty more tomatillos here yeah that's all right it's making um, seeds now yep Just leave it there for the moment. I'll collect them later. The blaze of fire salvias are just so striking and beautiful. Um, I really, I'm really, really happy with those. And then I've got the purple and uh, regular um, cayenne chilies here. So looking forward to purple cayenne chilies. That looks like a jalapeno at the back there, or maybe a capsicum. Um, so it was obviously a seed jumped into the wrong container. Now it's starting to spit. So let's do this quickly. The tomatoes are growing beautifully. The damage seems to have subsided from all the rain, but we are getting a bit more. Mom, there's hay, there's there are heaps of strawberries. Um, and we're starting to get some turn red, which is nice. So I'm very happy. I was expecting much more rust, fungal disease um, than we have had. 
There's a few bug issues here. I'm going to pick this off. There's no point at putting its energy into this tomato if it's going to be all rotten and gross. So it's good practice to pick off ones with bug bites in it. I'll put them in the compost. We'll throw them over the fence. Here's another one which, with a bit of sunburn, it looks like. Um, the cucumbers have been very prolific, especially the poinsett, which I mentioned in my harvest video. But these tomatoes still need to be staked when we get a chance. It's getting to that time of year where it's really dire to do it. And these ones too, they're so big, they need a stake. But lots of flowers and fruit on those, so I want to get them off the ground. Um, these ones are doing well, but I wanted to show you my rock melons starting to really grow. Really happy with that. Um, so rock melons and watermelons through here. This is a watermelon you can see from the different leaf. Hopefully we get some fruits. It's still early in the season, so it's looking promising. Lots of flowers back here. I'm going to show you the other flowers I planted along the edge. This is burdock. It's medicinal. Um, it's got a thistle-like flower, so good for the bees. There's another one there, and another one there, and another one there. And then this here is a tree dahlia, so it gets to over two meters tall, and it has um, kind of like an open-faced seedling flower. I believe it's white. You can get pink. Um, but the bees love it, and I was hoping it would hide some of this ugliness. In through here, and the dahlias I planted along here are flowering. The bees are enjoying them, which is nice. And this one's starting to bloom, and it's such a pretty colour. It'd be nice to see that fully open. I wonder if it's a pom pom. Um, the bees have been still loving this. It's such a great flower for the bees. My first Radebeckia, I think that's how you say it, or Black Eyed Susan has opened, which is also there for the bees. And then this, I don't know what flower it is, but it's quite cute. I'm pretty sure that's a medicinal herb, so I'll have to go back and look at what I planted. The corn is starting to grow and the watermelons are growing in between it. The savoy cabbage is just about ready to be picked. I'd say it is ready to be picked. Look how big that is. It's massive. I've never grown a savoy cabbage before, so I'm pretty happy with that. Look how cute you are. Gorgeous. The sweet potatoes are taking over. These are pigeon peas, and it's starting to get some height on them. And look at that watermelon. Can't wait for watermelon, guys. Um, let's walk down here. I planted some carrots in here um, last week and I forgot to water them yesterday so probably most of them died um, in the heat but some of them are still there. Looks like I lost most of them. Well, that's a bit sad. Could be from slugs and snails, it could be from the heat and me not watering them yesterday. And there were leeks in here and there's still a few surviving. But more dahlias in there, the chrysanthemum, the clary sage, so beautiful the flower on it. Let's have a look at you, gorgeous. That's there for the pollinators. So that's just about it guys, lots of tomatoes, these are bush beans, lots of my bulk veg in here, um, but I'm really really happy with how it's growing. Just need to get that bank doing something now so it's not so ugly and then i'll be really really happy with this space so hopefully those geese you can see the geese there hopefully they can get it down and those um canna lilies that i planted the other day hopefully they can grow up and hide a bit of it but that kaikuyu grass is really really ugly um other than that if i can get that pathway done and that bank i'd be super super thrilled with this space I hope you enjoyed that tour of what's growing on in my garden. There is a lot happening. It's mid-summer, so even though I'm wearing a jumper and it's about to rain, it's mid-summer here um, and things are just thriving. So stick around and hit subscribe if you haven't already and hopefully I'll see you next time. And I'm going to show you how I made a fromage fraise. fraise? It's a creamy 
farmhouse cheese and then I made something really delicious with that afterwards. I actually made two really delicious things with that afterwards. So stick around and I'll get that out to you Monday probably or Sunday. We'll see how we go. <laughs> see you guys. Bye.